the uh, executing summary. In this work, we observe that large language model decoding kernels have different and dynamically changing computation and memory bandwidth demands at runtime. However, the existing heterogeneous architecture have two shortcomings. The first one, they imply dynamic scheduling that fails to dynamically cater to changing kernel demands. And next, they only support one type of processing in memory device with a certain computation throughput and memory bandwidth capabilities. To solve this problem, our goal is to design a heterogeneous system that caters to different and dynamically changing computation and memory bandwidth demands in um, decoding. So our key idea is to enable online dynamic task scheduling on a heterogeneous architecture via online identification of um, decoding kernel properties. Uh, therefore, we propose a new computing system called PAPI with dynamic um, kernel scheduling to the most suitable hardware units at runtime and also with hybrid PIM units to meet diverse um, kernel demands. Finally, we find PAPI outperforms a state-of-the-art PIM-enabled um, computing system and a pure PIM system by 1.8 time and 11.1 time, respectively. First, I provide a short background of our work. Here is a case of um, inference process. It consists of two stages. First is the profiling stage, and the other is the decoding stage. In the profiling stage, LLM decodes all the information from the input request in parallel. Here is an example. You can see now we have four yellow tokens, the yin tokens, Sam did his PhD, and we code all the information by the LLM to generate the first token at. And in the decoding stage, we generate all the other tokens in serial or in parallel. We also use the last output token to generate the next output token. And we execute the iterations again and again until all the output tokens have been generated. So what's inside in our um, structure? Basically, it will have multiple decoders, and in each decoder, we have multiple layers. It can have two types. The first one, the yellow layer, it can call be as the attention kernels. Usually, it is encoded from input tokens, and they have different data across different requests. And the pink layers, they are called fully connect kernels, and they are usually we're trained by um, training, and they can use the for token generation across different requests. So let's get back, and uh, we just mentioned that decoding can be in serial or in parallel. So what is the serial decoding? Here is an example. As you see, an LLM generates tokens in request A one by one. Therefore, serial decoding leads low hybrid utilization and low throughput of um, inference. That is not good. So to uh, overcome these issues, people provide parallel decoding these days. To be more specific, we can do the parallel decoding to decode tokens of one request in parallel. As you'll see, the tokens in request A can be generated and processed in parallel. So we call it as token level parallelism. And also, we can even decode different requests in parallel. The green one and the, the yellow one are the tokens from request A and request B, which are different requests, and we call it as request level parallelism, RLP. So with TLP and RLP, parallel decoding can achieve higher hardware utilization and higher throughput. So our question is, do TLP and RLP benefit all kernels in LM decoding? To answer this question, let's characterize um, kernels and uh, find our observations and the motivation. I summarize the first our key observations. First, LM kernels have different computation and memory bandwidth demands across RLP and TLP levels. And next, memory bound kernels exhibit uh, different computation demands depending on the kernel type. Third, LM kernels have dynamically changing RLP and TLP levels. Let's move detail of each observation. First, we analyze the roofline model of LM kernels with different RLP and TLP configurations on our GPU system. And uh, as you can see, the yellow one uh, shows attention kernels and blue one shows FC kernels. With different RLP configurations, all the attention kernels and the parts of the FC kernels are memory bound, but the other FC kernels are compute bound. 
the same situation with different TLP. Therefore, LLM, LLM kernels have different computation and the memory bandwidth demands across different LLP and TLP levels. So why do they have different demands? Let's give you some reasons. When we use parallel decoding, FC kernels can process all the tokens at the same time. Therefore, FC kernels can benefit from both RLP and TLP. So when the RLP and TLP are super large, we can get the memory compute bound FC kernels. And for the attention kernels, we can only process different requests in serial since different requests have different attention data. Therefore, attention kernels can only benefit from TLP and attention kernels only usually have a much smaller uh, TLP than RLP and then attention kernels can be only memory bound. Furthermore, let's only focus on the memory bound kernels for a while. You can see the attention kernels have a very small arithmetic intensity, even smaller than 10 floppers per bed. But for the FC kernels, it has a much larger arithmetic intensity. Also the same with different TLP configurations. Therefore, memory bound kernels exhibit different computation demands depending on kernel type. Moreover, we find that parallelism levels, RLP and TLP vary dynamically in real world scenarios. For example, RLP decreases at runtime when using static batching. Here we analyze decoding cycles of requests in one batch. And as you can see, with the decoding cycle increases, the number of requests decreases. And not only the RLP, but also the TLP, both of them we find they are dynamically changing and we find a lot of reasons. We have all these details uh, analysis in our paper. Therefore, LM have dynamically changing RLP and TLP levels. Please find all these details in our paper. Next, let's look at a state-of-the-art approach, which is a PIMI-enabled LM computing system with a memory-centric compute device and a computation-centric accelerator. Usually, we map all the attention kernels to the memory-centric device and map all the FC kernels to the uh, computation-centric device. We find there are two shortcomings in the state-of-the-art. First, they employ the static scheduling, which will lead to suboptimal performance across different parallelism level. And also, they only support one type of PIM device with a certain computation and memory bandwidth capacity. First, as we just mentioned that the state-of-the-art typically use static scheduling, which map all the attention kernels to the memory-centric device and map all the FC kernels to the computation-centric device. That can be good for the memory-bound attention kernels. However, it fails for the FC kernels that switch between memory-bound or compute-bound, as our roofline model shows. Therefore, static scheduling leads to suboptimal performance across different parallelism level. And next, we find the Prayer works leverage only one type of PIM device with a certain and fixed computation and memory bandwidth. However, memory bound kernels, uh, tension kernels, and memory kern and the FC kernels have varying computation and memory bandwidth demands. Therefore, prayer approach support only one type of PIM units. It is hard to meet the various demands of the FC kernels and the tension kernels. Based on our analysis and the insights. Our goal is to design a heterogeneous system that caters to varying parallelism level in real-world LLM inference with different and dynamically changing computation and memory demands. Next, I will show you the Puppy's overview. Puppy's key idea is to enable online task scheduling in a heterogeneous PIM-enabled architecture via online identification of kernel properties in large language model decoding. To this end, we design a new PIM-enabled computing design with hybrid PIM units to cater to different parallelism levels of FC and attention kernels. And also, we design a dynamic LM kernel scheduling to cater to dynamically changing parallelism levels. Here is a published architecture. In this architecture, we have a high-performance processor to handle the memory-bound or compute-bound FC kernels, and we have the attention PIM to handle memory-bound attention kernels. As you can see, 
there are FC PIM and attention PIM in architecture. The hybrid PIM units handle memory bound FC and attention kernels with different computational and memory demands. Next, I will describe how to implement our work. Let's see the high performance processor in Puppy Architecture first. It in includes a scheduler to do the dynamic scheduling and also with two kinds of computing units. One is processing units and the other is FC PIM. When the FC kernels are compute bound, we will assign it to the processing units, which is computation centric. And when the FC kernels are memory bound, we will assign all the kernels to the FC PIM. And in happy architecture, we have FC PIM and the attention PIM. FC PIM is placed in the high performance processor and the attention PIM stores KB cache. They are separate from the high performance processor so that we can add more attention uh, PIM units to provide a higher uh, memory capacity and a higher memory bandwidth. In each bank in FC PIM, we integrate four floating point processing units so that we can have more FP use per bank to provide a higher computation capabilities to cater to FC kernel's demand. And for the attention PIMs, we have more bank groups per stack and also more attention PIMs device. Therefore, we can provide a higher memory capacity to cater to attention kernels. Now we have two kinds of uh, computing units to execute the FC kernels, FC PIM and the processing units. So how can we do the runtime scheduling? Before do the runtime scheduling, we will identify the memory bandwidth threshold offline to test the, the FC kernel's ex execution time with different parallelism levels and find the, under what condition the kernels can have a better performance on FC PIM rather than PUs. After that, we will execute the runtime scheduling. First, we are always monitoring the, uh, the parallelism levels, the RLP and TLP. And once the parallelism levels changed, we will execute the arithmetic intensity predictor to estimate the arithmetic intensity of FC kernels and compared with them, the memory bound disk threshold. And finally, we execute the scheduling to map FC kernels to each FC PIM or PUs. Next, let's look at our evaluation part. We evaluate puppy performance and energy simulator provided by ATTAC, which is based on Remulator 2. And we compare the puppy with three baseline. The first one is a state of the art PIM enabled LLM computing system named ATTAC, and a PIM with um, HBM PIM computing units, and also a PIM only processing units. We employ all of these with three workloads, which are very popular transformer based LLMs. And uh, we use a Dolly dataset with two different tasks. Here are the performance result. On average, Pepe provide one time, 1.8 times, 1.9 times, and 11.1 times compared to the baselines. Our speed up over Pepe only, PIM only is about uh, is because of two reasons: hybrid PIM units and also the heterogeneous system with computation-centric processing units. And here are the energy efficiency result. On average, Puppy improves energy efficiency by 3.4 times, 3.4 times, and 1.2 times compared to the three baselines. It is because the heterogeneous baselines, ATTAC and the GPO plus HBM PIM execute all the FC kernels on energy hungry A100 GPUs, while Puppy offloads part of this to FC PIM devices. We invite you to check our paper for more details on Puppy's implementation, such as heterogeneous architecture design and the random scheduler. Also, more evaluation results. And we also do the area and the power analysis to make sure our design can enter the constraints. To conclude our work, we have three key findings. First one, LM kernels have different computation and memory bandwidth demands across different RLP and TLP levels. And next, memory bound kernels exhibit different computation demands depending on the kernel type. Third, LM kernels have dynamically changing RLP and TLP levels. To, to this end, we propose Puppy, a new PIM-enabled heterogeneous architecture design that caters to varying 
demands of ion kernels by scheduling them dynamically to computation-centric processing units and hybrid PIM units. And finally, we find PIP largely improves both energy efficiency and the performance over the best of prior LLM decoding systems. Here are all for today. Thank you and happy to take any question. So please state your name and uh, your affiliation. Much, much, you see, well, I uh, very nice talk. Thank you. Uh, the question is, have you maybe quantified the high speed interconnect uh, uh, interconnect influence? So what kind of latency we need to have for the interconnection between those two complete systems? Uh, you mean the interconnect uh, design, why we use this uh, interconnect, right? Uh, no, you are exchanging the data eventually, right, between the GPU and BIM. Yes. And what is the influence of interconnect? How fast has it, uh, does it have to be? Oh, I got it. Uh, basically, you mean the GPU, I think it should be the high-performance processor, right? We can think of it the high-performance processor as a GPU, and uh, uh, outside we have the tension PIM device. Basically, it can only use the general uh, interconnect. Let's say uh, we use the PCIe, and you can also use something like uh, CXL to do that. Since there are very few data uh, trans data movement, uh, they only require to send the Q vector, which is a about a bit level. So we don't require very fast uh, uh, interconnect to do that. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Hi, uh, my name is Shelly, also from uh, Huawei. Um, um, so I just want to preface this. I'm not uh, I'm an expert on the view, I guess. But um, regarding uh, this work, so I know that MLA, the multi-layer detention, kind of shifts a lot of the uh, memory-bound uh, operations of attention more to the compute-bound side. Uh, first of all, how would you see this affecting uh, your design and processing and memory in general for MLAs? Um, you mean how to general to use our architecture for the LLMs, right? For the multi-layer attention. For the multi-layer attention. So basically, um, these days works more and more use PIM to accelerate uh, attention. Uh, not only the the attention we use the here and also some new attention, let's say the MLA attention and uh, such like this. Since all of these are memory bound, so it is good to use processing in memory to accelerate them. So yeah, I, I just thought um, that MLA is kind of push it from memory bound this more to compute bound. Yeah, but it's really hard for attention kernels to do that since uh, we cannot use batching to make it from the memory bound to the compute bound since different requests already have different attention data. So we cannot reuse the data for parallelism. Last question. Jen Delvoir from TU Dell. You mentioned a, a predictor for arithmetic intensity. How yeah. do you do that? Oh, uh, basically, it is a estimator equation. We have some equations and then find that the arithmetic intensity can be equal to TLP plus RLP. And then you have a very, um, well, let me show you some result. Here, uh, with the equation, you can see our estimated arithmetic intensity is very similar to the uh, measured arithmetic intensity. Only when the uh, TLP and the RLP are super large, we will have a gap. But it doesn't uh, uh, influence our uh, result since when the arithmetic intensity, when the parallelism levels are super large, it should be compute bound. So that's not a problem. 